Oh, brilliant. <laughs> so welcome everybody. I'm staring at my screen so I can't see anyone, but thank you so much for joining our tonight's or today's Mainframers online session. So we have been running these events roughly quarterly for around the last three years. So we've got a few of us are in person uh, hosting in London tonight. And wherever you're from around the world, UK, America, globally, a warm welcome to you. So tonight, the title is Grow Your ZOS, Developing Your Mainframe Potential. So we have a theme around training, training on the mainframe. And we've got a, a great bunch of speakers to, to speak with you this evening. And then the second half of the evening, we'll be opening it up for some discussion. So let's kick off so a warm welcome to all especially if this is your first time joining it's great to have you so this evening i've just got a few slides to show a little bit about who we are what we are what we're about uh, and then we'll have an icebreaker so some of you may have joined um, probably about 18 months ago, we did a Kahoot quiz. We'll be doing something very similar again in a couple of minutes, just to warm you up whilst we wait for a few more people to join to get the evening running. Then we've got Herb Daly speaking. Uh, he, he's a senior lecturer from the University of Wolverhampton. We've got Paul Fairburn from IBM speaking about training and skills uh, offered uh, on mainframe from IBM. I'll be sharing a little bit on some training resources and trying to open that up to this broader community to get involved. And then we'll have a broader time, uh, an open mic discussion. So what is Mainframers? So this may be your first time joining. You might have heard from word of mouth. You might have seen uh, uh, someone might have reached out to you through LinkedIn. So as I've said, we're, we're an open community. We started off as an IBM community. Um, the aim has always been broader than that. So we're now a truly open community with um, a bunch of people from a range of different companies, backgrounds, experiences. Uh, we aim to be a fun, informal, uh, but informative community to bring um, even events like this, where we have experienced people sharing on a range of topics, we also want to be broader than that. We want to be a community where people can engage, can chat, can ask questions, can feel included. So this is a, a, a meetup that is open to anyone. Uh, we, we aim to be uh, free, inclusive, um, and we would love to get some face-to-face -face meetings. So originally we, we started off as a face-to-face -face, uh, event meeting in London. COVID, we, during COVID times, we went online. So now we've grown our reach to a more global audience. But going forward, we're really interested in trying a hybrid approach where perhaps we can get pockets of people in different locations to come together on the same, the same time. Um, so you can get the benefits of having a global reach, but also having that face-to-face -face as well, which we think would be really valuable. So we'd be interested in getting people's thoughts on that later. Also, there'll be a questionnaire at the end of the evening to get your feedback on how you found the event, um, potential future topics that you'd like to hear discussed, and just get any general feedback in, in terms of how we can improve this community. Oh, I've realised I'm not playing it as a slideshow. Let's play from the current slide. So here we are. This is some of us. We're uh, an eclectic mix of people from a range of different companies. I've touched on that already. A few of those people are, are, are no longer on the team, but we're also always kind of growing as a, as a team, looking to have new people come on board. So if you'd be interested in joining us, um, there'll be more on that in a slide or two. We're very open to having more people as part of our planning team how to get in touch. Uh, so there's a range of ways you can uh, get involved with us. We started up as a meetup. So that first image, the M, 
Uh, you may be familiar with Meetup. You may not have any idea of Meetup. Meetup is a, a platform uh, that you can sign up to that we advertise through. In terms of community interaction, we have a Slack community. Uh, you've got details there. That's a great way to engage with us outside of events. And LinkedIn is becoming an increasingly uh, useful platform for, for, for spreading the word about who we are and what we do. Also, there is a Twitter account too. You can watch previous events. So we've had a range of previous events on um, specific products on the mainframe. Uh, we've had uh, events around security. Uh, we've had a theme of cloud modernization. We had a, a very interactive session where it was just discussing hearing in terms of people's experience on the mainframe. So there's a whole range. We like to kind of mix up how we do events uh, and, and keep it fresh. So we keep previous recordings available on YouTube and there's details there. And we'll make these slides available after the event as well. So if you don't get these links, you can uh, get hold of them uh, later on. So get involved, become one of the organizers. Uh, I've mentioned that briefly already. We meet together weekly, uh, not weekly, bi-weekly. So every other week for 30 minutes, the end of the UK time uh, and at different times if you're coming from other locations. We do have planners that are in uh, America. So it, it can work as a, as, a joke, as a global planning community. If you'd like to get involved, reach out to me or get in touch on Slack. So ways to get involved, you can be part of the organizing, you can be a speaker, you can host it like I am now. There's all sorts of ways that you can get involved. Uh, time commitment is relatively low. Um, people, so we've got 30 minutes where we, we come together every couple of weeks um, and there's, there's little bits to do of housekeeping between that, but it's not a huge commitment time waste. So if you would be interested, please do reach out. And also being part of the community, as well as attending events, we really rely on yourself to spread the word to drive the community. So what makes these events fun and rich is, is when we get your engagement. So that's why we've got time later on for the open mic session, because we want to hear you. We don't want it just to be me speaking and the other speakers. We want to get your engagement. We need you to spread the word. And we, as I say, we'd, we'd love your, your feedback on the event. Before we go on to the icebreaker, does anyone else here in the room want to say anything? Have I missed anything? Yeah. yeah. So before we get into today's presentation, before we go to Herb, we're going to start with an icebreaker. So what I'd encourage you to do is to get your phones out, get a tablet out, get something. What you'll need is you'll need the screen that you're looking at at the moment because that will have a series of questions and you'll need another device to log into. And we're going to have a very quick game. It's just a bit of fun selling the no prizes. Uh, but it, it's for those that are, are familiar with a, a game show catchphrase, we'll show you a picture and there'll be, it's a multiple choice. You get four answers and it's just guessing the answer as quickly as possible. Based on how quick you are, it determines the number of points you get. It's just a bit of fun. So we'll do that for a couple of minutes and then we'll hand over to her. So to join, you will need to log in to www.kahoot.it. So that's Kahoot with a K, and then you'll get a PIN code. So if I can go to the screen, you'll see on the screen a PIN code. So to start with, you'll need to log into Kahoot.it, and then you'll get an option of putting in a PIN. If you put in the seven digit PIN, that will allow you to join. And once we've got a few people joined up, we will make a start. So thank you. I can see a few no names already. Brilliant to see. Um, I've, I've had feedback from the team here that the quiz is very corny. Uh, if that doesn't translate in your uh, language, um, 
my apologies uh, in advance for the pictures. So the answers are all kind of common. Well, I say common, they may be obscure. Mainframe, Z, ZOS terminology. Uh, the mainframe is full of obscure acronyms and terminology. So it's just a bit of fun. No problem at all if you don't know any of these. It's just to have a bit of fun. So I'm just going to wait another 10 seconds and then we'll get started. So I hope this works well. It, it worked well when we tried it uh, about 18 months ago. I see uh, still a few more people are joining, so things are slowing down. Not really brilliant. <laughs> there may be a limit on how many people can join, so I think that it's possible we've hit a limit. So let's get going. No, we've got some more. We've got a me. <laughs> people are still doing this. Is great. Thank you. Right, let's make a start, and then we can move on to the real. The real focus of tonight, of today. So it's a game of say what you see. So you're going to see a picture. You'll have, I think, 20 seconds to answer. But the quicker you answer, so you've got an option now of checking, of, of selecting red, blue, an orangey, yellow, or green. So based on what you see, select what you think the right answer is. <laughs> Hopefully it's quite intuitive. So we've got 21 people have answered in the time. Oh, and my screen has frozen. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> Refresh. Yeah, the page. Oh, there we go. So nine people went for systems programmer. The answer was a bend. So the tip was against <laughs> the curve on the road. So well done to those that get it. We'll see those who got it right next. So well done to AB, who answered it correctly. Herb was second, and Sam was in the room here, <laughs> came third. So hopefully you've got the idea now. You'll see a picture. It helps you've got a secondary device so you can see the screen. Let's just get straight into it. So number two, so there's just five. I've got people shaking their heads in the room here. <laughs> I can only apologise. This is my bad humour. Well done for those. A few more got that one. So CMT. So there was a picture of cement minus the EN. So well done, AB. Still in the lead. Question three. Yeah, my very poor sense of humour. Just one of these. <laughs> what is it you're looking at? Brilliant. The, problem, you know, <laughs> the answer is ASCII, and it is spelled with the, the two eyes. <laughs> Herb is now taking the lead. Well done, Herb. <laughs> right, we're nearly there. Two more questions and then we'll move on. Oh, yes. Sorry, this is again my email. <laughs> <laughs> Well done to those who guessed a par. I hope uh, you guys have uh, some knowledge of golf and how that works. Uh, let's just quickly move on. AB is back in the lead. Well done. So we have Big in third place, Sam in fourth, Bobby in fifth. So last question. Just one of these, what can you see? Oh, 
this was pinched from the last time we did this quiz, so you may have seen this before. If you've been with us. <laughs> See, I got that one, but then I'm old. Yes. <laughs> so there were six pictures, and each picture... You need picture... to recognise Ray Reardon. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Ray Reardon, Ray Clements, Never Ray Charles. Montagna, I was just, I Ray, Ray Charles, <laughs> Ray Ban, yeah. six different Rays, yeah. but it was just one. I think I'm just a bit too young for me. Yeah. <laughs> People are leaving in their droves. <laughs> right, let's see the winners. So in third place was Fig. Very well done, Fig. Second place was AB, all oh, knocked off of top oh. spot. So the winner is our first presenter tonight. <laughs> so I'm quickly going <laughs> to drop the mic and without further ado, hand over to Herb, who is our first speaker tonight. So welcome, Herb. Thank you so much for being part of this evening. Uh, let me hello, hello. You take the room. Thank you, thank you so much. Greetings to everyone from uh, from Wolverhampton in the West Midlands. Um, so we're we're doing this jointly tonight um, at the University of Wolverhampton with our uh, our mainframe society, the Student Mainframe Society, Wolverhampton Mass. I'm just quickly going to pass the camera around so you can see all these guys. So hello, Will. Can you, uh, hang on. There we are. Hey guys. So it's it's a, it's an evening activity that, that we have here. We have our, our trusty um, University of Wolverhampton mascot, who, if you know your Doctor Who, is a um, an Earthshock Cyberman. And I briefly want to talk to you um, about our thing, which is. Oh, over. Um, potential and the platform. So I will get up my, uh, where did he go? Get up my uh, presentation, which was happily with us a second ago, but let's, I'll do it like that. Can we see that? Can we see the presentation from the beginning? No, we're still looking at you, Herb. Still looking at me. Okay, hang on. Then fiddling with Zoom. Ah, there we go, there we go. Just takes a little while to update. How about that? Yep, that yeah. works. Roddy Herb. So, um, hi, lovely to meet you. Uh, my name's Herb. I am a senior lecturer at the University of, of Wolverhampton. Um, this is what I look like kind of ordinarily. Um, one of the things you will notice, and that's my Twitter profile on the left, is um, talent scouting is one of the things that I kind of get involved in. I often kind of meet people and go, haha, I can think of just the thing that would, that would work for you. Um, other things you might notice in my profile, like that one there, um, the guy who recruited me into doing this actually picked that out. So some people know what that means and some people really don't. But um, if we meet up, I'll tell you all about that because it's a, it's a sci-fi thing. Uh, anyway, so this is where I work. This is the University of Wolverhampton uh, and we are in the West Midlands. We have a Premier League football team. So you may have uh, heard of us on that basis. Now, I'd like to take you back uh, exactly a decade to the academic round table that took place at Hursley in 2012. So uh, this was like a three day meeting for UK academics uh, who had some interest in mainframe one way or another. So there's a number of us from various universities and you can kind of see me in the back there. And we had some great talks from uh, some other universities across Europe. We had some industry people in and we all took up approaches for how we were going to move what we were doing with the mainframe uh, kind of forwards. Uh, and my approach was what we kind of called a grassroots approach, uh, which was really about uh, engaging um, students and kind of harnessing where we took 
our mainframe kind of experience on student curiosity, what they liked and what they and what they wanted to do. So this was this was one way of going about it. Some others were kind of like directly sponsored by kind of local companies, but we felt that that was one that kind of worked for us. And so on the back of that, I think we established a, a mainframe society at the University of Bedfordshire back in like 20, maybe 2012, 2013. And this has been a kind of a recurring theme um, that we, we've kind of found interesting ways to kind of um, engage people at um, undergraduate level. So if we think about the, the platform itself, um, we, we often have this discussion about, uh, you know, kind of, uh, are, are, we, are we losing or are we gaining mainframers? How do we bring people on the platform? The, the, the formula is essentially simple, right? So we have the, the new talent coming in, we have the established talent, which is leaving over time, but we find interesting ways to try to spin it out and keep it longer and longer. And what we really want to do is make that bit in the middle as fertile as possible. So it, it, it's thinking of ways that we can uh, kind of maximize that, 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 that kind of, uh, that, that period in the middle before, before it kind of moves on. And that's, that's kind of the essence of, of what we, what we do. We, we think about, well, how, how do people come on the platform and, you know, why do they leave? And, we, we try to make that period in between as productive as possible. So who are the, who are the best candidates for uh, new talent on the platform? Where do we find these here uh, unicorns? Well, um, as, as a talent scout, I'd say it's kind of, well, wherever you do. Um, there are um, prospects to kind of bring new people on the platform. So people who have no particular experience or, or kind of prejudices. Um, there are prospects to bring experienced people who either know about other platforms or about business processes that relate to what you do and bring them on the platform. Um, sometimes that's a choice between internal and external. So whether you're um, kind of uh, finding people from other departments and kind of bringing them across or whether you are thinking about um, people uh, that you that you don't engage with directly and kind of giving them that opportunity to kind of see if it's for them. One of the conversations I've often had is kind of uh, whether the graduate route or the apprenticeship route makes more sense uh, and the truth is uh, either um, the only thing to bear in mind is the proportions of either sometimes differ and the ability to kind of rope them in. So the processes to make them make them happen can differ as well. But depending on the organization you are, so I know um, people like IBM, uh, people like Barclays Bank in the UK have very good apprenticeship programs that bring uh, people in and bring them on. Um, at the same time, um, you will often find uh, if someone has engaged with the platform when they're an undergrad, and uh, if you were at GSE a couple of weeks ago, you'll see we had a bump across people from a number of universities, including my own, um, then that's a very good way to, to find people as well. But definitely be open-minded. Um, one of the, the various ways that you can kind of engage people is through tech forums and conferences. So there are various places where mainframe world meets various other worlds and there might well be someone you're having a conversation they think for themselves you know they, they could be you know they, they'd maybe be interested in what the what the platform has to offer um, internships if your organization has them are a really great way uh, on both sides for people to kind of have an encounter uh, you know and this can be anywhere between say 12 weeks and a year where you kind of you know take someone into the team and you, you get to figure out, uh, you know, whether whether they kind of fit what you do and whether they enjoy what, what the platform is all about, because in a way it is it is kind of special. Um, some of you may know 
particularly if you're into psychology. Um, uh, Own it online. Uh, this is kind of a project that kind of codifies the features that people have for different jobs. I just want to throw this out here as one of the ones that um, kind of comes up for people in tech. So I picked on programmers, but there's got to be at least 10 different profiles that they talk about uh, for people who work in technology. And they, they basically kind of list some of the features that you might expect for somebody who does well in this area. So, for example, they're talking about computer programmers. Uh, you'll see that they pick on things like deductive reasoning, right? So, kind of figuring out kind of consequences and, and how things kind of kind of come together. Um, and you, you have interestingly things like speech clarity. So, you no, know, just need to be good at thinking. You need to be good at explaining things. And so, in a way, some of these ideas might help you kind of triangulate, is this someone who would enjoy uh, kind of working on the platform? Do they have the, the kind of the set of um, kind of interests and abilities that kind of chime with someone who does well in this area? But um, I have often found that the people who um, get on the platform and do well are often kind of drawn to it um, by kind of various means. Uh, this is a this is a mouth organ, and this is a church organ. And if you're a church organ kind of guy or gal, um, so you, you you like the big platform, you like to have a lot of impact, then maybe that's telling you that that mainframe would be something or a place that you're you're kind of kind of happy, you know, kind of someone who's making a big difference. Um, if we're talking about graduates, undergraduates, and this is my experience at university, uh, the, the subjects that are hot at the moment, if you like, so when I talk to my students and I say, so what do you want to get into? Uh, the type of things they're saying to me, cybersecurity, that's a, that's a, that's a big one. Um, DevOps is something that people talk about. So, you know, working with infrastructure and, and coding to kind of make stuff happen and deliver stuff faster. AI and machine learning is a, is a popular uh, kind of topic, and it's a, it's a degree we're recruiting a lot for at the moment. And data science kind of, kind of more generally. Um, now, one of the things we have in our favor as mainframers is that we generally have good stories about what the platform does in all of these areas. Yeah? So, you know, I, I talked to some of my um, cybersecurity students and I'll say, okay, so this is, you know, the most securable platform that's commercially available. Uh, you know, we're already thinking about, you know, kind of quantum safe encryption. Um, you know, th this is this is an area where, you know, if someone were to breach your mainframe, the type of data that we have, you know, could, could completely sink a company. So you have a lot of responsibility and you have the best tools available to you. And for all the areas, there are conversations you could have that kind of highlight what it's all about. I mean, more generally, people who are in the computing area uh, will often kind of have hobbyist tendencies, which might kind of draw them towards the platform. Now, I'm talking about this area because in a way that's kind of the easiest, that's the most adjacent, but it's by no means uh, exclusive. Uh, we've had some excellent candidates, part of our uh, mainframe society, who were doing things like linguistics. Uh, we had a physicist who used to run it. I've met some really great biologists. And one of the reasons that we run it as a society, rather than something kind of on the main curriculum, is it means that we can get people in from different areas. And, you know, for a lot of them, it's, it's an interesting prospect. So it's all about exposure. Um, if you are talking to people about this, if you're if you're engaging people that you think uh, might kind of uh, kind of get something out of this world, uh, remember, it, in, <laughs> enthusiasm is infectious. So uh, one of the things I, I really like, stories I like telling people, are kind of the people I know on the platform, and they do exist, who run to work every morning because they're so excited 
about what they're going to do on their mainframe that day. I genuinely know these people, and uh, and they're, they're they're really keen to meet. So the, the fact that there are people on the platform having a lot of fun is um is something to get across. Um, as any mainframe I will tell you, um, they do some really important work. Uh, sometimes late at night at GSE, you'll have these conversations. And people can tell you about the disaster they averted that you know no one must ever know about. So there's a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. And if there's someone who enjoys making a difference and you know can handle responsibility, that's definitely something that, that kind of attracts people to the uh, to the platform. The other thing I'd say, and this is the uh, England women's rugby team here, uh, is mainframe is a is a team game. Uh, as, as you know, many many areas in tech, a lot of it's about you know kind of the superstar individual. One of the things I like most about mainframe is that you know you, you get some really strong players, but it's really all about the team, and it, it's it's a very strong team game where a lot of tech isn't, and that's one of the things I think is really interesting about it. Really good teams. Um, so, there's an initiative that myself and a good friend of mine, Henry Kuiper, who is the technical director of GSE Netherlands, are running this year after an initial go last year. Uh, how many of you know about Advent of Code or know what it is? You can put something in the chat. Okay. Now, um, Advent of Code, uh, and some of you may have seen me going on about this on uh, on LinkedIn recently, or, or asking some 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 kind of interesting kind of mainframey questions. So th this is a this is an annual event um, created by uh, by Eric Watzel here, um, and uh, it, it is basically a quiz. Ooh, I know I think quiz is a, is, is long term. Maybe it, it's it's a challenge. It's programming challenge that people from all over technology and all kinds of language uh, take part in. And basically, it is a Christmas themed um, competition that brings out a different challenge every day that people get to solve in whatever language they would like to. Now, it's, um, it's really clever how it works. It basically gives you an example and it gives you some data and it says, right, produce the code gives you a challenge and you come up with a result. You type in the result and it tells you whether you've, whether you've achieved the objective or not. Every, um, every challenge has some really funny story about Father Christmas and how he needs to do things with his sleigh to kind of deliver um, the presents each year. And what Henry and I have done is create a special um, leaderboard for people to complete uh, Advent of Code 2022 using mainframe languages. Uh, I will put this in the chat, but there is a link to a Reddit post that starts to invite people to, uh, to get involved with this. Now, what is a rain mainframe language? I mean, it's any language that you use on the mainframe, right? So. Uh, I, I've, I've had conversations with people who love their assembler, who were into their Rex, um, Java, COBOL, I could mention Python. Any language that you use on the mainframe uh, could be one that you complete advent of coding. Now, the reason why we're doing this is to A, encourage uh, mainframers to be playful with their use of coding because I think that's really important and there, there, there's so much enthusiasm out there uh, and this is kind of a way to 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 harness it. Um, it gives us a chance to look at the languages that we that we have and compare them to some of the other uh, ways of doing things that are out there and gives us some common things to talk about. So you'll see on the left there's a picture of the Rosetta Stone some of you may know the history that this was uh, this was found during the Napoleonic Wars uh, in Egypt, and uh, it, it basically provided a way that we could transfer um, or we could translate um, the the hieroglyphics that we found 
um, of the, uh, the Egyptian era uh, into, um, into English. So we understood the Greek, we had the hieroglyphs, and by combining the two, we could then start to read um, uh, these, these ancient sources. So potentially, it could be a way to bridge the gap uh, with people who are using other languages who don't know the platform and, and just show them, uh, you know, the type of things that we the type of things that we do and, and help us learn about their languages, too. So I just wanted to uh, put that out there. Uh, I hope I can encourage some of you to uh, to sign up. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a chore. Hopefully it's just a bit of fun. Uh, you could do all the way, you could go all the way to, to Christmas because they release a challenge every day. Or if you like, you could just do one day, one day for fun and see how it goes. Whatever you are able to do, that would be grand. We do have, if you're doing COBOL, we have a sponsor in Microfocus. So people who submit in COBOL um, could, could win prizes for their participation. Uh, we, we are looking for sponsors for other languages. So if you're out there, um, do do get in touch. But that was that was really all I wanted to put out there. Um, thank you very much. I'm sure that's about 10 minutes worth. And I would open things up for questions. Let me... Are we still there? Yep, we're still there. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Herb. Okie okay, okay. Does anyone have any questions for Herb? I think, Herb, you have to drop off early on the call. So if anyone uh, does yeah, have that. A little bit. So I'm going to drop off early, but I'm going to leave all my mainframer guys here so they can, you know, they're, 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 they're with you. I'm going to put those those links in the in the chat there so you can read about what we're what we're trying to do. Uh, I mean, question for you if you have none for me. Um, oh, there is one. Hang on. Let me. Uh, I see we got one or two. Uh, There's a question from Paul. Uh, when did you yep. become aware of mainframes? Um, well, aware. I mean, everyone's kind of aware of them. Uh, they were always kind of stalking you. It'd always be in kind of textbooks, and I'd kind of go, oh, yeah, I don't need to read that. It's about mainframes. Um, curiously, um, I did some work when I first graduated on a platform that has a lot of um, kind of things in common with the mainframe. And it was only when I was running something called UKCMG that I met mainframers for the first time and thought, oh, yeah, there's so many similarities between the platform I grew up on and what what um, what mainframers are using, um, and I, I know how to explain that to people. Uh, so um, so that was where it that was where it kind of came from. Brilliant. And I think people have the ability to unmute themselves. So if anyone else, maybe we'll take one more question before we move to Paul. The the one that I might ask people is how many of you think you'd like a go on advent of code just for a giggle oh i have i have hands in my room and i'm gonna i'm gonna put the link in there so you can have a look Brilliant. yeah let's throw that out there and i see andy has uh said how he became aware of mainframes if you've got feel free to chip in on the chat of how you became aware of mainframes as well yeah, origin stories are really interesting. You, you see them in the Marvel universe all the time. How did you become a mainframer? Some, some interesting stories right there. So Herb has put a link to the Advent code in the chat. Um, so people have asked how they can communicate. So there is a chat here in this Zoom room that you can open up and see what people are posting. And we all have a, a an open mic session later, so we'll encourage people to, to, to share more freely then as well. But I, in the interest of that, let, let's move on. Thank you so much, Herb. It's, it's really Thank great to, to hear your enthusiasm um, and, and to, it's amazing what you are doing. It's great that you've got this, the, the next generation coming through that you've brought 
to this event, uh, the students you have with you. So thank you so much, Herb. So next up tonight, we've got Paul Fairburn. Uh, over to you, Paul. I'm muting myself. Bear with me just a second. I'll go into uh, brilliant screen share mode. Can everybody see that clearly now? Yeah, we can hear and see brilliantly. Fantastic. Um, so, if anybody's got any questions as we go through, please feel free to chip in if you think it's um, valuable at that stage. Otherwise, pop it in chat and we'll have a look at the end. Now, I know Matt will shout if there's something that appears in chat that needs some um, clarification straight away. Um, so uh, just as a way of introduction, I recognise a number of the faces online, but for those of you who don't know, uh, my name is Paul Fairbairn, I'm the IBM Z Systems Client Skills Leader for Europe. So as part of my role, I spend my time working with IBM's clients across Europe um, and with some of the uh, main universities looking to address the skills challenges that um, industry has. What I wanted to do today, um, I've uh, spoken at uh, the main framers in the past, but I thought it'd be useful given that we've probably got a, a, a number of new faces, just to do a whistle stop tour of the training programs that are available to you, the vast majority of them are free from IBM. Now, when I say talking about training programs, what I'm primarily looking at is those resources that are aimed at people who are either brand new to the platform or in probably their first five 10 years of training. So without further ado, I'll move on. So uh, I was going to uh, actually go to the web page and I thought, no, that's far too risky for a live demo. So if you remember nothing else that I say to you uh, this evening, um, if you remember that link up in the top left hand corner, ibm.biz forward slash Z talent or Z talent if you're coming from the US, uh, that is a one-stop shop to give you access to links um, to a lot of the training materials that are available to you, free self-paced virtual education. Now, they're just some examples of the, the training materials that are available out there to you. Um, I'm gonna particularly focus tonight on, on Z Explore and the Global Skills Accelerator, but at least this gives you a view on some of the materials that are out there a number of them come with badges. You can see uh, a lot of these, if not all of them, are no cost. Um, and as I said, all self-paced, so you can get access to them. I will share this with uh, Matt so he can pass it around. But if you go to that website, you'll be able to see all these things live. Um, in addition to that sort of material, which is, um, you know, pick the pieces you want. There are also a couple of learning journeys that are available, one for developers and one for architects. Uh, the links at the bottom will take you to both of those. So by all means, have a look through and see what um, see what interests you. As it says, there's about 10 hours of training for each of those different learning journeys. And that may help you to get a feel for the direction and the sort of further training that you want to engage in. If you're an educator, um, there are some additional resources available to you, primarily the IBM Acad Academic Edition Initiative Unfortunately, that's now part of Skills Build, which is far easier to say. Um, but essentially, what comes with uh, Skills Build uh, is you can get access to an academic cloud. Um, this is a, a mainframe system fully configured that's available for teaching and research purposes. So you can go join the academic initiative through the Skills Build link. And that uh, the link that's highlighted there will actually take you straight to that. So, so this is for educators. Um, they can request access to that mainframe system uh, if they prefer, or if you prefer Linux One, then you can get access to the community cloud there. Uh, that's 24 seven. That does actually time out uh, and you would need to rejoin after, I think it's 60 days at the moment. It used to be 120, but it, it varies around. Um, in addition on that site, you can get access to courseware, software, badges. You can also find guest lectures. Um, but don't be put off if you go to the lect guest lectures database and don't see what you're looking for. Just reach out to any one of us and we can look to see what we can find uh, to help you with your, your training. I'll talk about Z Explore in a moment, um, but from an educator's point of view, the value here is that um, as this asset is self-paced, it is um, standalone, so you don't need to know anything about the mainframe. Um, you can set this as a piece of coursework for students. Um, and we can provide you with a, with a status tracking to see where your students are actually getting on. 
Um, the other thing from an educator point of view is there is an educator hub. Um, so this is part of the broader IBM Z and Linux One community. Um, but it's got what you have there is this is a, a community of educators. So everybody pretty much is, is involved in um, actually uh, providing training of some type on the mainframe, whether they're uh, lecturers like uh, Herb or whether they're IBMers doing training um, or other companies. Uh, this is a great place to go to uh, actually find out resources and discuss and chat with other people doing the same sorts of things. You can find out about the programs that some of the universities have that are available for free to other universities just to take and use um, and even for clients. And there's also a link to the student hub which provides that same sort of um, capability but for students. And the other thing is IBM Z software trial. So if you're, you're looking to get some hands on with specific IBM products, the, the Z trials is the best place to go to. So I'm gonna go through this reasonably quickly because I wanted just to touch on two particular areas. Okay, so um, having given you some sort of background and just an aside, as I said, this is mainly geared towards uh, people in their early years on the mainframe. Uh, if what I'm showing you does not touch anything in the areas that you're looking for, then I recommend you go to ibm.com forward slash training um, and search on mainframe. That will give you a list of the, the courses that are available out there. Um, a lot more of those are actually chargeable because they come from some of our global training partners, but they are more geared towards that sort of um, higher level of training that you may be required depending on where you are in your career. Um, so... Z Explore was the main thing, as I said, I wanted to talk about tonight. So if those of you who've been around the mainframe for a little while may remember something called Master the Mainframe, um, which was a student contest and learning platform. Um, that was sunset uh, a couple of years ago. And what we've done is to rewrite it um, and launched it now as Z Explore. So this is a whole new learning experience. It's, um, it's, it uses VS Code. So if you're if you're new to mainframe, it doesn't suddenly present you with a green screen. Uh, it's actually uh, giving you a format that uh, should be recognizable from many other um, server platforms. Now, this uh, is primarily a learning experience. Now, it follows what I probably best describe as sort of more of a gaming sort of approach in as much as you start at a base level, um, you're given information. Uh, and you are set a task, when you actually complete that challenge, it unlocks the next level for you to move up. And as you can see by the, uh, the diagram on the right hand side, um, there are sort of different levels you go through. First of all, um, fundamentals and then concepts. Um, the concepts badge is the first one you earn. Uh, if you're an experienced mainframer and just want to have a go at this, that uh, this should take you about an hour. Um, but what it does do then is it unlocks a whole series of additional challenges um, that we might introduce you to, to Rex, to COBOL, to Python, to this, we're talking about MQ, we're looking potentially at doing something around kicks. There's lots of different challenges that um, are then available to you. And following the sort of uh, the model that worked very well with Master the Mainframe, you have that initial um, training phase up to the concepts and then the advanced stage, which uh, is another badge, you really start to get to put in place um, what you've learned during that sort of first stage. Um, now, at the moment, uh, if you're a student, you can actually take part in the um, student contest. Uh, so there's a, a link directly to that. If you go to the IBM biz forward slash IBM Z explore, click on these links, I will send them out or go to uh, the IBM dot biz slash Z talent site and you'll see the link to Z explore. You can participate in that contest. Uh, it's running and um, has been running since late September and it goes through until the end of December. There's some great prizes there, cash prizes, merchandise. Um, and one thing I didn't say that I should have said at the start, uh, what I'm talking about here is available globally. This is not a UK statement. So uh, for those of you who are dialing in from around the globe, uh, this contest is available to you. This learning experience is available to you. It is all free, it is self-paced. Um, and you know, whilst uh, you might think we're kind of aiming this at students, it's actually not the case. We actually talk to, to clients. So anybody new to mainframe um, can actually get access and can um, 
can learn the basics, get a real understanding of what mainframe is about, why it's important to a major industry, uh, and why Herb showed that picture of Atlas holding up the world earlier on, um, shows the importance of, of mainframe in, in running a lot of the infrastructure of the world as we, as we know it. So Z Explorer, if you're talking to anybody who's new, if you're new yourself, go and have a go. If you're a student, have a go at the contest. Um, before I move on, is there any questions, Matt, that need answering? Because I can't see chat just at the moment. You're on, you're on mute, Matt. Okay, we'll come back. No, no questions at the moment. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, here we go. How do we get to the white tiles of various class titles? That was your opening slide from that's from Scott. Okay, so let's, let me just go back. So these are the so these tiles are seeing the ones you're talking about. If you yes. actually go to that um, that website on the top left hand corner where it says just on to get started, you'll actually see these items listed. Um, and those will take you through. And in fact, I think if I send you these charts, these are oh no, the links don't work. This is just uh, these are just uh, tile images. But if you go to that website, you'll be able to access each of the items on here. Thanks, Paul. Okay, right. So the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is the the most recent announcement, uh, which is the uh, IBM Z Systems Global Skills Accelerator. Um, for the guys dialing in from the US, um, you may recognize this as the, uh, the IBM Z apprenticeship program that uh, Franklin Apprenticeships uh, is delivering with IBM. Um, what I'm focusing on today is the, the global version of that. Now this is a intended to be, uh, from a client point of view, what we consider to be the easy button for training uh, or getting, uh, people bringing onboarding people as systems administrators and application developers. So this is uh, geared towards apprentices, um, students, uh, and, uh, and also to anybody moving uh, maybe within a business or changing careers. Um, this, this program, which has over 320 hours of training um, over a 12 month period, uh, is geared towards taking um, people who are new to the platform from not knowing anything up to the point at which they, they start to become dangerous. Now this is uh, available to, um, to mainframe clients to sign up for. Um, there was a cost of $6,000 per apprentice for that 12 month training program. And the expectation is that a client would hire an apprentice, uh, a student, or um, they have people transitioning within the company, they're looking to retrain to the mainframe, uh, or as I said, maybe people coming out of the services looking to for new jobs. Um, they would sign up for either the systems administrator or application developer course. And that 6K is really, is none of that comes to IBM, it is purely going to Franklin Apprenticeships, um, who run the uh, apprenticeship program in the US. That's for um, them covering the program management, working with you as the client, um, providing success coaches for the students and assistance for the managers. So it's all part of that broader training program. Uh, now the content is a combination of IBM uh, content, it is Interskill and it is Pluralsight. Uh, so if you don't have Interskill or Pluralsight um, licenses yourself, um, you can get access to those as part of this uh, signing up to this program. And I think that was all I wanted to cover on that. I've probably gone over my 10 minutes, but um, it's probably worth saying at this point that you know, we've been, um, we've had a, an ecosystem team now in place for about three and a half years. And um, we took advantage of COVID where nobody was traveling around uh, to really start to focus on ensuring that we have learning paths in place rather than just a, a toolbox of, of education that you need to try and pick your way through. And we're making some good progress. We've got over 200,000 new developers and students engaged from uh, over a thousand different high schools, universities and colleges globally, over 32,000 ZOS practitioner certificates. Um, and 
um, even down there on the new disease system. So I talked about the communities that are available, one for educators, one for students. There is also um, the new to IBMZ or new disease systems community out there. And working very closely with that, we have the, the GSE um, Gen Z, sorry, new next gen. So that's next N-E-X-G-E-N um, uh, community that was launched at the GSE UK conference last week. Now this is game that's aimed towards UK um, professionals who are, who are new to the platform. So we're sort of building a sense of community there amongst that group. Um, the idea is that they, uh, the, the next gen and the new to Z um, organizations work closely together. The new to IBM Z is very much a, a global organization. So it works very well with a, more of a UK focused next gen organization through uh, GSE. And as Herb said, that enabled us to bring a lot of uh, young people to uh, the GSE conference, uh, which ran um, two weeks ago. Normally, there are the majority of people attending that uh, are, are 50 plus. What we saw this year was very, is very much two distinct groups. There was the 50 plus still there, but the numbers dwindling and a significantly higher number of people under the age of 30. So we're seeing that next generation of mainframers starting to come through. That was the, the whistle, -top tour, stop, whistle stop tour. If you've got any questions, um, please shout. If you uh, prefer to check later, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I'll, uh, my details are on the, uh, the opening page of the uh, chart deck. Thank you so much, Paul. That's brilliant. I'm just checking people can hear. Nice. Um, Paul, that was brilliant. Thank you. Um, people are asking for your slides uh, to get into the links and things. I think there is an ability to attach the presentation in the chat. Okay. If you're happy to have a go at that, and yeah, also we I'll, will we will make the presentation available in uh, Slack. I've put a link in the chat to that. We'll put it there either later today or in the next few days as well. Okay. Thank I'll, you. So I'll see what much. I can do. Ask that link. Um, yes, the um, the link, the, the biz link doesn't go to the that opening slide that you shared. No, we... no, that's um, that opening slide is a summary of some of the. Oh, uh, I see. Available screen the page. It's screen grabbed. So if we go to your presentation, we will be able to see that tile because that's yeah. a really good so, tile. Yeah, Fantastic. so I, I would recommend going to ibm.biz Z Talents. If you go to that site and you actually go, um, if you scroll down a little bit, you find a button that says train. Click on that and it'll open it all up for you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Paul. So no hopefully problem. that's bringing, kind of giving food for thought for conversations in a few minutes' time. And it's great to hear about an appetite and, and new people coming through as well. It's really exciting. And we had we did have someone, I think it was Bethany Simpson, spoke on what was previously Master the Mainframe at a previous event. That may well be recorded and available as well. It was great. That was about probably 18 months ago. She shared her experiences from getting involved in that program and it was very positive. Right, before we... I would actually stay clear of Master the Mainframe now, um, not least of all because it's disappeared off the systems. Um, but I think the learning points that uh, Beth talked about at that session are, are still sort of pertinent um, as being very influential in helping her to progress her career. Thank you, Paul. Right, I'm going to share my screen again. So thank you to Paul. Hope people will stick around for some questions uh, and, and discussions later on. So before we move to the open mic session, I just wanted to touch on what training resources are out there. So Paul has just given us a fantastic digital recording presentation. Um, I'm gonna, you know, I will, but I'm gonna come out of it again shortly anyway. <laughs> okay, so Paul has given a really good comprehensive list of IBM resources on the mainframe and and really encourage people to go out there. In terms of the meetup, us as a mainframes community, we also want to put out a, a kind of a, 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 not a, a, a list of all resources that we think are out there. 
Um, we don't want it to be biased in any way, and we want to make it like a live, livable document. So th there may be this type of information out there already, but we thought it'd be really good just to pull together all the resources that we were aware of and give you access so that you can go and see what's out there and give you the ability to, to update when you're aware of new things. So I've just got a slide here of establishing a living document to describe what resources are out there. Just shared that, yeah, we want everyone, the community to be involved in it and keeping it up to date. Its aim will be to be independent and unbiased. We would like the wider community to shape it. So at the moment, it's just um, uh, on Google, a uh, Google Doc, is it? A Google, yeah. it's a Google Doc at the moment. It's a good place to start in that it, it's going to be open for anyone to, to access it. But we could make it something more substantial over time if there's interest. So it could move to GitHub pages. We could get opportunity for people to provide feedback as well on what your experience has been. So we're kind of seeing this as kicking it off just to get something out there. But if, if there is interest, that's very much in the community's hands to, to explore and, and take it further. So to get into that, we've, we've created a new channel on Slack called Training Resources. Um, I will go there now. So if you're in Slack, there's a new channel today called Training Resources. And in there is a link to a Google Doc, which I will open up here. So this is something that anyone can have access to, to browse and to edit, I believe. Um, and we've, we've tried to just brainstorm from the knowledge we have of what is out there. So we've got a section of IBM, BMC, Rocket, Broad, Broadcom, Interskill, Protec, uh, Themis, Beerhoff. Uh, red in indicates the service is like, most likely to have a charge. Green indicates it's free. Um, so we try to break it down by um, training organizations, conferences, in-person events, there's going to be a lot more to add to here. So this is really just the start of, we just had an initial brainstorm. So please go in and add things here. Online events. So an example is what we're doing. And there are many other equivalent events to, to, to like what we're doing. Hopefully we're the best, but <laughs> so I'm just uh, joking there. Um, hands-on training platforms, community. So the idea is just to, to have a, a place to go if you want to find out more about the mainframe. Uh, this we thought would be a, a great starting point. And other, and I see advent of code is being added there. Thank you. So yeah, as I've, I've shared, keep it up to date. The, the, the challenge of these types of documents is they quickly go out, they become stale. So its value is when it's, it's kept live uh, cat up to date. So just wanted to point to that. Um, we can touch more, people can ask more questions on that in a moment. So in terms of where we are now, we've got about 20, 25 minutes to go. So the aim now is to open it up to the floor. So I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, we've, we've had a session like this in the past where I think to me, this is like the richest part of the evening is we want to hear from you at this point. So we've had Herb speaking, we've had Paul speaking, particularly on resources, particularly on um, how they work uh, on, on online and events and, and materials. We also thought it'd be good to touch on the area of mentoring. So I know a lot of people... Um, that work on Z kind of end up, it becomes their career and they stay on it. Is, is it. There's so many people who are enthusiastic, who love working on the mainframe. And there's also concerns that it's an aging community, that people are getting older. And it's been great to hear this evening that there are new people coming through. But I think one of the things that would be good to open up is how we pass on that skill, that knowledge. So for the newbies, that there are, there are resources out there but also how do we hands on pass on what we've learned to, to those that are coming through? So that, that's one area that'd be good to explore, to get people's thoughts on is that, that, that mentoring, that kind of pair programming, being working alongside people, how that may work. Um, when 
people are working less face to face than they used to. Um, that would be a good discussion point. Another discussion point, there are lots of materials for newbies. What about for people that have been working on the mainframe, say for five to 10 years, but want to go to the next level? What opportunities are there? So just a few things to sow the seed, but open for anything, uh, open the floor for any, any conversations. One of the questions I got last night was about moving sort of sideways. I think they're calling it a squiggly move. But it's basically where you're sort of maybe moving from traditional mainframe and moving into some newer like Unix, Linux skills. And that's a question that I've had a couple of people ask me to bring up at the meeting. So I just thought I'd offer it to everyone to see what everyone's thoughts are. Feel free to unmute yourself as well if you want to talk or you can pop it in the chat. I've got plenty of sound, but I, I'm going to pause. I, don't I, know, I, you, I, don't wanna, I can see I, that. <laughs> I can see that you were primed and ready to go. Yeah. I want to open it up to other people. What? I think it's a great point there. I guess the other question would be, have we, in some of what we've heard, have we answered some of that question already? Because I think we've given some good tips about moving and then where and how to pick up new skills. Anyone here in the room want to be a voice on there? In, in the last uh, two years, I've had a couple of swimming moves that uh, going from technical uh, and then had a year in sales of selling technology. Um, so you're able to share how it can be used in, uh, um, in real world examples. And then I miss the technology so much that I've, I've now had another swiggly move into services. So now I'm actually augmenting existing companies. And so it's a, it's a bit more, for me, a bit more balanced in terms of there is that technical point, but it's all the other soft skills that um, uh, Herb was talking about. So not, not just coding day in, day out. It's also about putting together presentations and convincing people that um, change isn't scary. So it's, uh, I don't think the mainframe, I, I do believe that the mainframe is just another platform in a data center, just another server. So it doesn't matter what you, you know, the ZX store stuff, I've loved doing that because it's using different interfaces to whether it's a Zoe command line or it's a VS code with some extensions that allow you to manipulate code, Python on the mainframe. It's, it's so um, extensive the, compared to what it was 20, 30 years ago. Um, there's, and the, the big thing that I'm into right now is is using Ansible to, to do stuff. And then I can I can do stuff on a server over there and then do some mainframe and then go back. The lines are so blurred. So I think the squiggly lines, you could be in the same job, but actually there's this thing called job crafting, isn't there, where you can actually make the job fit your requirements. And I feel like I do some of that as well. That moving around helps, but then I just find I want to do something how can I do it? And it's almost impossible not to be able to do something then. And, th and that brings a lot of satisfaction. Thank you, brilliant. Anyone else want to chip in in the room? Anyone on the, that's dialed in? I think if, you've, if you're already in a job that works or that uses mainframes and you want to spread your wings a bit, and there's little opportunity within your current role to be able to learn more about the mainframes. There's always IBM Red Books. Mm -hmm. No one's mentioned those yet. They're free downloadable resources, just Google IBM Red Books. And there's loads and loads of, there's a wealth of information there that, uh, that you could just read up on. Uh, I don't know whether it's still there. There used to be an A to Z of Z, um, ZOS systems programming. There are quite a few volumes there. 
breaking everything down from the hardware through to chips and channels and uh, then DASD and then subsystems. Uh, yeah, loads of stuff. But uh, red books, good for self learning. If you've got access to a mainframe, if you haven't, then use the resources that we've mentioned before. See, explore. This is Paul Newton. The set of volumes are the ABCs. Okay. That's the ones, A, B, C. Thank you, Paul. I, I just, so part of my day job is working on bringing containers and Kubernetes to ZOS. And that, that's quite an interesting um, kind of split. I think for people on the mainframe, that's scary because it's, Golang, Ansible, YAML. Um, it's a different experience. It's a different world. For people coming fresh out of university, that's exciting because that's what they are familiar with. So it's very much around trying to bring the skills of people that are coming fresh out of university that they will have an experience through the mainframe that would be very similar to on, a, on another platform. So I think there is a lot more blurring of the lines and that that's going to, I think we'll see that more and more in the coming years of that blurring of the lines between whether you're using the mainframe or not, you, you may not realize you're using the mainframe because the experience will be similar. And you'll see similar things with tools like Zoe um, and, and, and other tools like that, where the developer experience, the experience is a lot, um, we're more accustomed to people uh, with what they would do off of the mainframe. I'd like to answer Milos's question. Thanks, Milos. Good, good question. Uh, he's 21, studying computer science, working in mainframe for a year. That's exactly what happened to me. I did a computer, computer science degree. Uh, everything was Unix around us, and I got thrown into this uh, mainframe arena. And I was I visited the data center, and it was just row after row after row of white boxes made in France, the, the 3080s, if you remember those, before then, the 3084, then the 3090. Uh, what would I do if I started my career in your place, Milos? Well, uh, that was me. And I think looking back, I would have grabbed every opportunity to learn more about the platform more about um, the business of running a mainframe of being just being part of the uh, part of the infrastructure of the team that um, that operates a mainframe um, just enjoy what you're doing and ask just ask questions so i think one of the other things i like is that we've got the videos now on youtube so much out there that if you see some content you can dip into it on youtube and if you don't like that person presenting it you can find other content on the same subject from somewhere else. So you've got lots of options out there to just dip in and get an understanding as to what's out there and what you can do. And I'd say annoy people, but in a nice way, because the trouble is with Z shops, or a DBA, or your sysprog, or your storage person, or a network person, go and sit on your storage person's desk mm -hmm. and find out what they're doing and mm -hmm. do the same to the network people. So the more you know, the more you know. Brilliant. So yeah, I, I recommend annoying people in a nice way. And I've been doing that for 35 years. So I've got away with it. I guess if you knew, you have a mentor and then that mentor can help open those doors in the other teams as well. Yep. So helpful. And talking about mentoring, if you're a, a seasoned mainframe professional, uh, look for somebody to mentor. Yeah. And if you're a newbie, then look for somebody to mentor you. It's amazing. Once you start helping someone, it's like a friendship. You know, it's, it's really weird. It's, a, it's, it's an unusual experience, but you kind of get a friend for life through doing it. Something I definitely recommend. Or if you like Alan, then write a red book. <laughs> <laughs> so what about someone who's who's joined online, any mentoring experiences as a mentee or a mentor? 
I'll, I'll happily call on some people otherwise. <laughs> I've, I've been a mentor to many and they've gone on to become very successful. Some are better than me and I couldn't be more thrilled. Biggest reward I've got. Brilliant. Excellent. Israel, do you have any story? You, you, you're a man of stories. You must have a story <laughs> in that area. I think Israel mentored Will, didn't you, Israel? Just to start that off. Anyone else? Is anyone looking to be mentored as well? Have it, are you on the hunt for a mentor? Yeah, hi. Hi everyone, uh, this is Tosi from uh, India. Uh, I just joined this, uh, this is my first meet. And I've been a mainframer for almost like 13 years now, uh, started you now, uh, and I come from India. So, which means the, I mean, I haven't seen even seen a mainframe yet, but I still do a solutioning on mainframes uh, in, in the current role that I'm playing, right? Which means I, I've actually seen the full cycle of mainframes. And I'm also a gen, why I think so, which means I'm still trying to figure out how you can use Ansible, the Python, and how do you make it more, uh, you know, intuitive at least, right? And 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 some of the conversations that I've been having recently with uh, the the cloud service providers, they seem to have a lot of solutions to kind of you know uh, do a lot of fancy stuff on mainframe, but that's not actually helping. That's kind of you know going the reverse way, right? Because you're kind of kind of consuming a lot of MIPS and the on the existing platform and it's kind of increasing the existing cost and all that. So, I mean, the point is I would like to hear from all of you, right? You're all experts in, and have so much of experience. So where do you think this whole uh, platform is evolving and and how do you think it's it's, it's moving, right? I mean, do you, re do you really feel that, I mean, where do you find that convergence between the, the, the cloud providers like the AWS, the Azure, or, or anybody else, right? And, and with, the platform that we have. So how do you think that will shape up in the next few years? I can go ahead and start. I can tell you that's something I've been looking at for decades. And I can tell you these farms of X86s are unsustainable for power reasons. And that's become a big thing within IBM. I've, I've seen facilities built that are massive and the amount of power going in there is massive. And it could be done in a fraction of the space, fraction of the power using mainframes. In fact, when IBM first put Linux on the mainframe, I think with David Boys one time was asked when he spun up 44,000 Linuxes on one mainframe that was 20 years old, he, he somebody asked him in the audience, where do you see the mainframe going? And he, he said, I see the whole internet on the mainframe. And everybody laughed. I don't think he was kidding. But anyway, I think these farms of x86s are becoming unsustainable. And the amount they're having to charge is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because it is costly. So the mainframe, in my opinion, with what they've done with the Telem chip, is the machine of the future. Right. Um, in full disclosure, I do work for IBM, but I used to use mainframes as a, as a, a customer. But yeah, so yeah and I, I would agree with that, Paul. In my role, I work for Broadcom, and I, I visit lots of customers, and I hear sustainability, you know, and ESG targets, environmental, social, and governance over and over again. And those were conversations that weren't happening, you know, two, three, four, five years ago, but they're certainly at the forefront now. And I'm seeing customers moving workloads back onto the mainframe as well for that reason and other reasons as well, such as the Dora legislation. But... I agree that you know things are looking good for the mainframe long term future. There's an executive of a UK retail bank uh, did a an ESG pitch around the um, on the IBM Z Day uh, um, presentation, and he talked about uh, and these figures might not be totally correct, but you get the impact. There was like sixty percent of a bank's workload was being done by the mainframe and that was representing single digit percentage space of the data center and single digit percentage of the power requirements for the data center with all the resiliency built in 
in, you know, five nines of availability. And, and, and that's to those points that that's what makes it um, still viable, that it's, it's not as expensive to run. Um, and as you were saying, the, the containerization that's coming, there's a, a different retail bank that's actually containerized uh, a ZOS image, and they're going to run it in the ZCX extension, you know, so the containerized extension, it's almost recursive. They've got a virtualized operating system running a container that's running a 1L bar MVS image, and they can spin it up in 20 minutes with everything on it, do their testing, and then destroy it. So just Brilliant. like the, the, you know, the cloud environment, the original cloud is now mimicking the new cloud. Brilliant. Yeah, the, um, that image, it's known as WASI as a service in the cloud, and it's known as ZVDT on premise. And um, I actually mentored the guy that took the ADCD and made that happen. He's, he's uh, better than me. But I used to mentor him. Oh. Can I add one other thing? I'm yeah. talking a lot now, but GSE, we talked a little bit about that. We got a virtual one in, in March. And after the success of the in person one that was paid for, and et cetera, the virtual ones aren't paid for. You can only get the recordings if you're a member of GSE, but you'll be able to attend the, the uh, Zoom based conferences wherever you are in the world. And I'm going to have a day on Zoe in the track, the app dev track, a whole day on Zoe and a whole day on Ansible. On, on ZOS, who would have thought that five years ago we'd have been talking about an open source solution gets a whole day, you know, maybe eight hours of content and Ansible as a as a tool, uh, potentially having eight hours of content that's specifically mainframe focused. Brilliant. That's March. That's it is, yeah. So isn't it March? Yeah. February. I think it's, it's the end February. of the end of February. February. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, paste we'll, we'll advertise it and, and, and yeah, we, we can paste, paste it in the community because we want to spread the word on the good stuff that's out there. Yeah, there's lots of tracks in, in GSE, Large System Working Group and DB2 and, and IMS and new technologies and all sorts of things, but that'll be a whole bunch of resources that'll be available for people to join. Sounds like that. Uh, but but I I mean do we have any use cases I mean I, I've I've heard a, a lot of you know ways you could you know, for example Zoe or you know or you know what do you call this uh, there's another few other tools right I think uh, which I've kind of don't have it the thing is all these are kind of creating you that interface right the platform because we all know that the kind of platform mainframes is and but the way you communicate with it is not so. Uh, friendly, at least to the guys who are kind of getting into this. I mean, the new generation guys, right? Who, I mean, who who wants to create a data set uh, using multiple screens, or you know, or probably look at the the dumb data using something, right? Probably they won't like to have some sort of a power apps, a uh, kind of a view where you kind of see, look at graphs and and stuff like that, right? So, I mean, I, I do know there's a lot of innovation that has been going on, at least in the recent times with with all of this, but. Have you seen any real-time use cases with their customers are kind of using all this stuff, like uh, the Power Apps or the AWS or any of this? Well, if you use, I think if you use the, the Zoe plugin for VS Code, you don't need to touch the green screen. Um, I use, I, I do a lot of development and I use VS Code and I use so the Zoe plugin to contact the, the mainframe and do all my um, data set editing and job submission straight from VS Code, which is freely downloadable. Yeah, and that's actually what um, Z Explore uses as well. It's VS Code through Zoe to a to a live mainframe, so um, you can get uh, some practice there if you're unfamiliar with it. One of the other things that was demonstrated at, uh, at GSE that's going to come out in March is um, an extension to Zoe, so that you can actually. Uh, interact with the mainframe through uh, a chat tool. Teams was one of the supporting platforms. So if you're in a recovery and someone says, oh, what's that data set look like? Instead of someone having to hop out, get the data set attributes, 
cut the screen and put it back in. <laughs> if you've got the Zoe command line available, mm -hmm. through the chat, you can issue the command and it comes back into your persistent chat. So you'd always be able to refer back to it with the ability to obfuscate if if it was sensitive data because it, you know, um, but yeah, that, that's good. So, so it's, it's not even about having a traditional IDE they're turning MS Teams and a couple of other platforms into, I think Slack was one of them, mm. Slack Teams into an IDE as well, mm. so that uh, people can collaborate around uh, mainframe artifacts. The, we've, we've gone down the road of having like uh, Windows or web browser interfaces into our software. So most of it now isn't a, a mainframe front anymore just to make it a bit more user friendly and easier for people to, and I, I think that's probably common for everyone. So a lot of that, the, oh, you've got to go in through an old panel. Now we, we've got the new, we've all got it, like new interfaces. We've, and FYI, the chat, the, the, the chat extension does exist now. You can actually in VS Code find the extension. Yeah. From a design perspective as well, that is a big focal point, like making sure that the interface into it is as usable and as friendly to those newer developers and uh, programmers coming in, because we know that it has been previously quite inaccessible. So that is a, a, a key factor to a lot of design work. And I'm not even talking about just from an IBM perspective, it's, yeah, it's the same. everywhere. The same. Yeah. Is there someone else saying something? Uh, so there's a question. What about what can you say about GoLang and its future with mainframe and any other new languages for mainframe? Well, Python's not new. It was written in the 1990s, but <laughs> that's now uh, native on Z. Uh, I think GoLang's on the mainframe, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, although I've never played yeah. with that. There, so, there's there's been a number like Swift and Go and everything else. We got Swift to run Go. Now Go was real big with blockchain, but I haven't seen Go or Swift get a lot of traction. I mean, the mainframe's not an iPhone. You know, <laughs> being a little bit sarcastic. But. Yeah. So that that is going to change. I think it's just a few years away. So I mean, mm -hmm. by bringing containers, Kubernetes to the mainframe to ZOS, that is 100% dependent on on Go. Ah, very it's all, good. That that all of those components that make up that so that like run C, cryo, Podma, yeah. all are written in Go. So that is going to be needed. And very as that capability comes there, I think there's going to be more need for very customers good to, 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 to use as well. So yeah. Very good and, point. And you had mentioned earlier about some of the old timers being afraid of the the ZCX or Linux on. I, I think one reason we're a little bit nervous about it, it needs to be more mature. It's taking up a little bit too much resource. It's not a, a disciplined address space at this point. That's what makes the real old timers nervous about it. It's very powerful, but it, it, it takes up its own frames and it's kind of a little bit of an unruly address space like DB2 was when it was first introduced. But it's got a way to go to... Um, become a, a good address space citizen in ZOS. That's what we're worried about. I, yeah, I hear you there. I understood. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move now and just wrap up quickly. I don't wanna keep people longer than we, uh, we said, so I'm just gonna quickly share the screen. Um, as I share the screen. See my screen. Oh, let's just go uh, from here. So, in terms of wrapping up, firstly, a huge thank you for joining. Um, brilliant to have your attendance. Thank you for being part of us. Again, we just ask you please to spread the word. If you want to be involved, join the community, um, give us your feedback. We rely on your feedback, particularly in terms of themes for future events. So we'll, we, we try to run events once a quarter. So our next one will be some stage early next year. And the final thing to, to call out is there's a survey. We'll post the link in the chat. 
So let me grab that now and put it in the chat. Um, please come and to everyone, please give us your thoughts on how you found the event. Um, it's really, we, we, we rely on your feedback. We were interested to know whether we will be up for meeting face to face in the future. We want to know what themes you'd like to discuss. We'd like to know what how what type of format you like the event to be, all those things. So please go there and give us your feedback. And thank you once again. Okay, thank you, everyone. I'm going to we'll close the call there. Thanks, Mark. And come and join us on Slack. Come and join us on LinkedIn, and and be part of Mainframers. Yeah. They all. Oh, and finally, thank you, huge thank you to our speakers. Sorry, thank you to Herb. The room is looking quieter there in Wolverhampton. Thank you to Paul. <laughs> thank you to those that have made it to, uh, to London for the team. Good to see you all. And just thank you, everyone, for being part of today. It's been fun. Bye thank for you. now. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys.